So good evening guys. Good evening. So we have uh, a f how many people who are here in the room for the first time? We have one, two, two people, right? First time today. First time today. All right. <laughs> so the concept of Awesome Walk is we'll just explain to you what it is so that we'll dive into it. And today's going to be a different session and you'll see hopefully by the end of today's session, even though the room is small in number today, it could be powerful. It has the potential to be powerful if you guys are willing to open and share. Now what happens is, so what is Awesome Walkers? Awesome Walkers started about a year back and today is the featured guest number 100. Yeah. Woo. And I wanted to choose someone powerful but then I thought I'd rather do something different, uh, something that I can remember for all time instead of giving the credit to any one individual, it is the people in the room who has always made uh, these sessions really special and amazing week after week. You agree, right? I mean, because of the conversations that we have. So what is Awesome Walkers? Awesome Walkers started off about a year back, uh, which was just to have simple conversations with the idea that we can all learn from other people's lives and journeys. There's so much that everybody experiences and there's so much of lessons that we can gather during our lifetime that it, you have the opportunity to either lock it and keep it down to yourself or you could spread it around as a light. And when you do that, what happens is, as a coach I can tell you, when I work with my clients as in my coaching practice and when I coach them, one of the biggest beautiful moments of my life is when I can create insights for them where they see their world differently. But in the same process, I'm seeing my own world differently. So if you start teaching others, if you start, if you start sharing your light with others, your experiences and the things that you have gone through, what you'll realize in those moments when you teach someone is your experiences that you have been through, because you're sharing, it solidifies more in your mind, it crystallizes more, and you have the opportunity to actually make it life lessons for somebody else to move forward. And in that, your own growth happens. It's very strange that when you're helping somebody else grow, you grow too. You would have seen this if you try to teach someone or if you try to share with someone, somebody younger or some sibling or something, when you're trying to te teach something, your best opportunity for growth is by teaching someone, which is why we say over here every time in Awesome Walkers, when you come over here, always focus on the message and not the messenger. See what it is that you can take away from the message and apply the principles of ACT, ACT. A stands for apply. See what it is that you can take from the message and apply in your life. C is change. See what it is that you can change about the way you're doing things. And T is the most important, I think. Teach someone from what you just heard or listened or learned. And in that, what happens is you open yourself to so much of possibilities. You attract abundance into your life. And this platform has been strangely an amazing opportunity for lots of amazing people to walk in every week because every Thursday what I do is I identify two people from the community, uh, people I have never met mostly who come in, sit down and then just speak, just share. And they have no clue what we're going to talk about. They have no idea what we are going to have a conversation about. But they open up and speak because their intent is pure. So if someone of you over here is saying, I'm very apprehensive and I find it reluctant to share. So what is actually happening is you're, you're feeling that you're going to be judged. But in effect, if, you're, if, you're, if your intent or if your intention is, how can I add value to other people's lives? Everything shifts for you. Then it's not about you anymore. It's not about how you're being perceived. It's not about how others look at you. It's about my life has been different and unique and everybody's life is different and unique. And there's nothing that we can actually change about the way we are because there's so much of dynamics which comes around our lives, right? So what it is that we can share so that somebody else can grow from it. So this is the reason why after your conversation is over, what we do is we ask other people to reflect. And one of the things that I repeatedly say over here is, for example, when you have watched a movie, for instance, have you ever cried? Have you? You cry, right? You sometimes cry. And the reason is because 
it's we know the story is fictitious we know it's not true we know it's completely made up still we cry we cry not because the actor is dying or the actress is dying or somebody is leaving somebody and going we cry or we laugh because we resonate with it we resonate with our own stories we resonate with the things that we are going through in life and this is exactly what happens over here every week when people share their stories we resonate with our own stories we unlock something else within ourselves so the format today is uh, quite interesting what we'll do is if you look at how we have done awesome walkers in the previous we have had this first 30 minutes where we get to know the people in the room right so we get to know the people in the room and we just ask one question and we just take it from there and then if there is something where someone is sharing and we feel that there could be a possibility for a deeper dive into that story we would invite you're free to say no i don't want to come and share more this is fine or you can say yes i would love to share more maybe it could add value to others in the room then what you would do is you would take the seat over here and we would go through the conversation for maybe 10 15 20 minutes it depends on how the conversation goes and then we would just you could go back and then we would start another round and we would have another questions and just take it from there so it's very free flowing free format where i actually have these sessions i don't orchestrate it i actually have no idea i have no questions in mind i have nothing prepared and that's how i love to do these sessions it's zero preparation because uh i feel the authenticity and honesty and everything comes out when you have uh when you just take it spontaneously just like how life is right so thank you for uh, stopping me on this book this is an amazing book but by Eckhart Tolle how, how many of you have heard of this book not the book particular you have heard of the author he's actually in town today he is he's supposed to be i think yeah strange amazing what so what's it about so the book's name is a new earth and you know what is the subtitle of the book awakening to your life's purpose why <laughs> it's an amazing uh, i haven't read it yet but uh, he's written another book which is called the the power of now yeah the power of now which is exactly what we do at awesome workers we live in the moment and we let it be we just be there and be present completely all right so uh, just tell me stop give me a number from 1 to 15 14 okay so there are few words in this sentence and i would pick one word heartbeat all right interesting in a heartbeat what question can you think of what question can i think of yep will i be the next guy will i be the next guy or the next person right what thought comes to your mind when you listen to that question santosh my zoom ha huh? my zoom is a device who in the gym major in major okay heartbeat. okay would i be the next guy how do you connect with that question because we both i assume both are doing workout on long distance cycle who you and both? oh really assuming okay that <laughs> 50 kilometers uh, he's just in a phase of my life okay using word bike bikers bikers one okay okay super anyone can think of any question with the word heartbeat in it or i will ask mine if it doesn't make your heart beat what do you do it lovely i'd love to hear your answer <laughs> <laughs> uh okay i think uh 
Okay. I love that question and I want you to come here. <laughs> Would you be willing? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Come, 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 come with the mic. Thank come with the mic. It's for you. No, no, it's for you. That's a beautiful question. I would love you to repeat I that question. I put myself in trouble, right? No, there's no <laughs> trouble here. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, yeah, my question was, if it doesn't make your heart beat, uh, will you do it? And uh, I know that you have taken up so many life decisions right now, new ones, which has prompted you to go on a very amazing path. Yeah. So. Okay. So my answer is, yeah, kind of yes now, not before in my life, because. Um, you would go on a path if it would not make your heart beat. No, I mean like yes, because the, this is the where I'm. In, I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm gonna grow, right? So if if it's if it's usually when something make me like my heart beat or something, usually I run away, which which is not. Uh, so what do you associate heartbeat now. with right now? Because, uh. <laughs> like for example, when you're giving a speech, sometimes a heartbeat is related to making you scared or. Uh, but now you have the option to actually feel alive. So both are completely different things, right? Okay. What do you mean again? So. You said before you wouldn't do it. Yes. Now you would. Meaning? Because I saw actually the the benefit of um, opening up and trying to, you know, the potential to growth is like when you are challenging yourself out of your comfort zone, right? So if it doesn't make your heart beat, then it is like you're, you're, you are not challenging yourself enough. You are not doing enough, I think. Please. All right. <laughs> what I would love you to share with us is because I know a little about you, Iman. Yes. Okay. So, tell us a little bit about your journey, what it has been about a year back and now today where it is. Okay. It's a very interesting story. Okay. <laughs> I truly believe it is a very interesting story for you who is a local national over here and how you have transformed compared to every other person who I know. So they would take some value from it. Mm -hmm. So just tell us where you were and where you were stuck and how you decided to change. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable with this? If you're not? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. You're okay, just right? Like maybe I need to fix the chair. Yes, yes. <laughs> you have to sit more lower, then you'll be more relaxed. Yes. <laughs> I have an expertise in beanbags. <laughs> no, I'm okay. No, she's I okay. Think, she's okay. I think now I'm okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like this was like formal. Yeah, you're sitting too high. Exactly. <laughs> <Very> formal. <laughs> so, uh, Okay. Um, I don't know where to start from, actually. Where were you stuck? Um, I think now I know, I realize that I had my own, like, insecurities. And uh, that's why <laughs> I'm challenging it more, right? How do you know you had I insecurities? Did, I did. When was the first time you realized that? Uh, it's not like one day, like, click. No, it took me a lot of time. And I didn't realize it immediately. I had to go through a lot of things in my life to, to, to come up with that realization. Would you be comfortable sharing that? I don't mind because actually when I shared some of the stories I had, actually a lot of things opened up without me, like even if I didn't intend it, but it just like, it's like dragging me somewhere that even though I, like I didn't, it's not like I didn't want to, but I didn't plan it. But I feel like there is choices that happen in our life that maybe within you that you want to do something, but I didn't plan it this way, but it comes sometimes better than your own plan, I think, which has which come to your like intention. So tell us. Uh, okay, which part? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe no, where you, you got stuck? Where you were stuck uh, and how you realized you were stuck? Okay, you said you had your insecurities, but give us something more tangible. Tell us more, something okay. more concrete about some incident. Yeah, one one story which uh, I always uh, talk about. For example, when I joined Toastmaster, Alhamdulillah. Us. So Alhamdulillah. I believe everything happened in the right time in in our life. Sometimes we plan, and I was very much planning everything up to the level like, oh, I have too much plans, and how much executed is like. But uh, the moment I like wanted to change things, it started happening. Before I hear the Adhan, I had like one story, but during the Adhan, it's, it's actually called for, uh, 
for prayer and that there is only one God and stuff. My name is Iman, it means faith. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe there is a reason why I'm called faith, right? So that brought me back to my story when, um, uh, even my story before I know, like when, before I was born, yani there was over fight over what to name me because I was the first grandchild from my family, from my mother's side and from my father's side. So my father is the oldest and my mother is her, the oldest as well in her family. So I was like the first, so there was like a big fight over the family, you can imagine. Like it's a big fight <laughs> over everything. So my father is from Dubai, my mom from Ras Al Khaimah. And uh, even though that they are f yeah, kind of uh, in family, uh, like they are relative from my grandmother. My grandmother had to make that decision. She's the one who decided matchmaking and everything. So when it gets to that point, like they, they couldn't agree on anything. So like, for example, one of them is like my name. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they had to make like, okay, let's, let's get some names. Like my mom, like one name was out was Iman. And then, uh, but still till the day I was born, it was not settled. But my father version of the story is <laughs> that that day when it was like a 3 a.m. in the morning and he just came, parked the car, and then he felt um, uh, the faith thing, he felt. And then he said, Iman is a good name. Then mm -hmm. He agreed on that day because he wanted to take the credit. My mom said it's a different story. <laughs> 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 and uh, actually my parents get divorced because it was like too much. <laughs> Both are leaders, so <laughs> and uh, here I am. <laughs> and uh, maybe one of the issues I had, like I, I remember, like uh, when I started uh, Toastmaster, I came like all whatever I'm thinking. I just came from US. Uh, I was in the general accountability of, uh, author, um, office. I ca I was working with a state audit institution. I came there. I I wrote a report about the quality excellency framework, and I wanted to present that to the president. So I thought, like, okay, fine. What I should do? Okay, the smartest people. I Google something. Toastmaster, public speaking. How can I present to the president? So president of UAE. Uh, no, the president of state audit. They they call okay. the role as a president okay. because uh, it is like the authority that's uh, audit the whole government. So for me, all was ever in my head. So, okay, I have presentation. Okay, so I joined Toastmaster for that. And then I remember uh, Googling and finding the best clubs. I thought, oh, business excellence, the smartest people. And okay, fine, I read their profile. I, 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 like I did a lot of analysis planning before I joined. Even though that like the VP uh, membership, Samir, he thought that he's the one who invited me. He didn't know I did my research before I joined the club. <laughs> so yeah, I, I invited him. So I know I did my research, he didn't know. Yeah. I just came, I signed up, I become a member. But two years, I, I didn't deliver any speech. <laughs> I didn't. Because I was like, I did my presentation, I came for this. When will I get the chance to, to do my presentation? <laughs> Nobody yeah. is letting me do that. And then they want me to talk about myself. I was like, why you want to talk me to talk about myself, icebreaker? What, what the hell? I don't know you. And this is my life. And, and like, my life. Why should I share it with people? Like, it's my life, it's like my story. And I remember even when I was at school, I had only one friend that she knows my story. And that's it. Till now she's my friend. She's also like, uh, she got married to my uncle. So she's like, permanent friend for life. So, and that's it. I didn't like to share. And. Uh, so where did the insecurity start? When did you know about your I didn't know, it just happened. <laughs> when I was realized that, that uh, the moment, uh, like, I was pushed, Yanni. Um, pushed by whom? Uh, you know, Dr. Slim, he's uh, my professor in. Uh, Dr. Slim? Yeah. Okay. He was uh, my teacher in the University of Wollongong when I was studying uh, Master of Quality Management. And then at one of, I was like, I enjoyed all of his courses. He was different than all the teachers, he has his own way of, you know not following only the structure of the book. He was like inspirational when he was like teaching us. He was teaching us life, not only the material, which that's why I enjoyed. Like I couldn't miss his classes. Some classes I come late, but his classes, like, <laughs> like I enjoyed. So I was telling him uh, sometimes like, oh, I'm doing Toastmaster, I'm joining Toastmaster and stuff. And then after a year, he joined Toastmaster and then he saw me, okay, in the, in the same club and he said, so Iman, how many projects you have done? 
I said, um, nothing. <laughs> so you're doing. Next time I will be, I said, can you be my mentor? He said, yeah, sure. So he became my mentor. And then he said, draft me something, send me something. I said, no, I didn't send. I don't want. And so I said, just send me anything. So I just wrote an outline. And I didn't write the whole story. And uh, that day, uh, like he just go to the um, uh, Toastmaster of the day. He said, Iman uh, Swedi, uh, what's your topic? I said, oh, yeah, OK, fine. Me, myself, and I, I don't know what's the topic. I said, fine, he said, you will talk. I said, no, no I'm not ready. Our next meeting, I'm not, I'm not speaking. He said, no, you're speaking. And then they call my name, Iman Swedi, uh, go speak. I was like, oh, seriously, no. <laughs> and then I spoke, actually, and I said, um, I said my story, like, but because I didn't like to talk about myself. So I talk about everybody else, like my grandmother, how she inspires me, my, um, uh, my mom, how she, I learned from her. And like. You have an amazing <laughs> skill where you don't talk about the question, but you talk about so many other things. Exactly. <laughs> so my You're doing it again over here. <laughs> 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 so I want to know. <laughs> So <laughs> this is what I did. Like, <laughs> like, this is not yet. This is not Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, Samir. I know <laughs> you will do that. And yeah, Samir is an amazing person. Asking people questions deep up to the level that make sure that they crack someday. <laughs> That's why I come here. You are the only person I come here and I listen. Usually I don't listen. You know that. <laughs> okay, Samir. And last meeting I told you something. Remember? What was it? Uh, no, before you travel, that was three, yeah, almost a month. I told you, Samir, the next meeting, it would be the 100 meeting, right? Mm -hmm. So I told you I would like to take the chance to, you know, maybe interview you rather than you interviewing me, see? <laughs> I'm good Very at that. <laughs> 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 this way, it's, it's, it's easier for me, and I like to do it. <laughs> <I don't> Tell like <laughs> us about how you got, how you found out your insecurity. I'm really curious about that. Because a, because a lot of people, uh, they s stay in the comfort zone for a long time. Yeah. And there is some trigger that happens which actually unlocks their uh, insecurities. Yes. What was the trigger for you? What was the trigger for you which made you actually quit your job, get into the John Maxwell, do these things? And this is what I want to know. What is the thing that has pushed you uh, to do things drastically? Uh, where you just realize, I have to do something. I have to take action. I have to take control of myself. OK. So actually, I wouldn't take the credit of me taking actions, because I believe a lot of things just happened. But and that's true for everyone, right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't say, oh, I, you know, I took the huh. But there is values I have that I don't compromise, which why, like, whenever I reach that value, system with like with anybody or anything in my life I know this is the time for me like to to leave you know what I mean no okay Your insecurity fine. give me that answer first okay so <laughs> that oh, oh my insecurity which part of my insecurity I have a lot <laughs> which see, one triggered you to take action see that the Toastmaster story is like I was pushed which which okay, I, that needed, was the starting I needed point. yeah I needed that push okay and then after I did my speech everybody you know, I got standard aviation and people's like, and then that moment after that, everybody keeps saying Iman didn't shut up. I don't know what's that, like, if that good or bad, but I didn't shut up. <laughs> so I started talking, talking. Maybe I, I started talking, but not deep enough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I can talk about anything. I like, but not very deep. All right. Maybe it is me. I want to see what you guys feel. Okay. What are you guys getting from this conversation? Okay. <laughs> what are you guys getting from this conversation that we had so far? Huh? Oh my God! Yes. Really? W what is your perception? Be honest. I mean, because uh, with this feedback, she would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, still, I don't, I don't know this story or where, where it started. Really. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, it's not coming from you. Ah, okay. What are you getting? Would I become you? I mean, okay. Like, in a short time. Yes. You know, like, you know, you're whatever age. Like, if I want to become that in a very short time, would you advise me? 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, why did it take so much time? You know, if there are some things, if I haven't seen the sure. case as you have at the age of 18, what do I do to reach wherever you are quicker rather than go through all those things and find out my insecurities later and all those things? So what do you oh, advise me? Yes. Well, there is a lot of things. So okay. Things what is the most important in that? I think for me, I was very much determined. Like yeah, you're talking to yourself. Yeah. So, I. Oh, would that's Iman, 18 year old. Iman, 18 year old, sitting over there. What would you tell her? Uh, okay, yeah. Don't worry too much. <laughs> I was too much worrying. Yeah, but. Uh, what does she worry about? I was too much worried. At that time, especially high school, that was the worst for me. Uh, like in high school, uh, I triggered the, like the worst uh, part of my, yeah, yeah, I feel like now, even if I recall, like there is challenges in my life. But in high school, I was like very extreme. Yeah, and up to the level that, for example, I was always determined to success. I was always hardworking and stuff. Now when I realize it's not about hardworking only. You know what I mean? Uh, I was I was closing, I was not sharing with people. I was not. Uh, um, I was worried about the perception, maybe, but I wanted to be good. I wanted to work hard. I was uh, reading. Uh, I was I was trying my best. Best. Um, what I've done is uh, I reached to the level that it's like oh you know, but still I was telling myself no you will not do it. Yeah, and it is so difficult and stuff. I remember even going to one teacher, I tell her, you know, by, by the way, like, halas, this year is, uh, I, I, w I will come back next year, you know. I'm not passing this year. And uh, I'm not like a stupid person, like, usually, I'm, I'm not like the smartest, but I'm okay. <laughs> Top ten, you know, I can. But w because of my hard work, yeah, I do like a lot of study and try to hard, but I don't memorize. So at that time, I remember I was worrying too much up to the level that I didn't eat, I didn't have, like too much stress. And I didn't know what I want. I didn't know, I remember I have- Do you know now? Yes, very clearly. <laughs> Can you share? Um, uh, I think I, I, like I like the book, it says like know your life purpose. Awaken to your life yeah, purpose. Yeah, awaken your life purpose. And uh, maybe because I'm very dramatical stuff, emotional <laughs> sometimes, that it took me a long time to do. But some people, they know their ca uh, capabilities and what, what make them, like what drive Iman, them to do. What do you want to do now? Okay. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Okay. Wait, like I have to say something, right? Why I am... No. What do you want to do? You said it's very clear to you now. Yes. What is that? Uh, Say see, it in a sentence. See, my, sentence. my focus is to empower women okay. in uh, leadership uh, uh, and uh, youth okay. also. What are you guys getting now? <laughs> so we had about 20 minutes of conversation. Nothing. <laughs> no, no, I just want to know. Am I like useless? No, no. Should I go? <laughs> no, no, no. no. There, there is something that you're taking away. Something, right? She's what are you lost. taking away? Huh? She's lost. She's lost. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Okay. What? Stuck. 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 Blue. Yeah. So Stick. Yeah. Quick fix. Okay. Stuck. I know it's glue, but yeah. I didn't get what you mean. So what do you say? I'm suggesting that you are stuck in a story. Okay. What should? Where should I be stuck then? Look at other stories that are more empowering to you. Ah, okay. Does that make sense? You want an empowering story? No, I don't want anything. <laughs> no, he, I mean he <laughs> wants. <laughs> right? Okay. Reflect on what I said. Basically, yeah. do you have an impression of Iman. Yeah. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. Yes. I'm suggesting right now where you are, you don't like where Okay. And yet you are stuck, and that story is rolling, which is not allowing you to be what Iman can be. Okay. Just say, okay, this is what I want to be. Forget the past. This is where you are. 
Tomorrow's another? See, for, for me, the, the past has, uh, has a story or lessons to be learned, yeah? When I'm referring to the past, to say that there was a story at that time that made me who I am now, I'm taking that as a gift. Because, uh, like, nothing, ha like, as Steve Jobs said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward, you can connect them looking backward. So for me, that's why. I know, like, why I can do that, because I'm so good at it. Yani can I give a feedback? Yes. What I would say is, uh, don't go on the defensive, don't uh, yeah. take it as a no, no, anything. Not. Just, uh, like he said, reflect upon it. Yes. And uh, there's no right and wrong over here. There's no answer that we are looking for specifically or anything, mm. correct? In this conversation, we have seen it. We have been having this for months together and everybody who comes and speaks over here, there's no right and wrong answer. It's true. And it's not my feedback or anybody's feedback. Uh, one of the things that I have learned during my journey as an individual, as growing, uh, interacting with a lot of people, uh, we all come from a space where we all humans will do what we believe is right. True. We yeah. all do what we think is right. Now, when I take feedback from somebody else and they say something which is not aligned with mine, I used to go back in the earlier days, younger days, uh, where I would try to correct them or try to justify my action. But then I realized whatever said and done, they were giving me a reflection of what they see of me, not of what is in my head, but what is in their head. Yeah. And there we actually have an opportunity to reframe it for them by our actions and not by our words. Because whatever we say is not going to correct in their mind at that point of time. Okay. So when we take feedback from people, what we should be doing in life is not trying to correct somebody, but to s reflect, use that opportunity to reflect because somebody is giving us an option to actually see us the way we cannot see ourselves. Yeah. Because when we are in the frame, we can never see ourselves, right? There's only one human being in the world that we can never see, and that is ourselves. We'll have to remove our eye sockets and keep it like this and look at ourselves. Otherwise, we can never see ourselves. All we'll see, even if you look into a mirror, is a reflection of us. Mm. So, when somebody else shares something, I always take it as an opportunity for learning and see how it is that I can uh, understand more about what the thought process is. Because you guys have learned about the tappers and listeners. You remember the exercise? Do you know? No, I don't remember. So, I will share it again because there are a few people over here. How many of you know the tappers and listeners? Okay, so in the Harvard University, yeah. Stanford University, I think in the early 90s, they had done one exercise where a lady came and she put in a room full of people with volunteers and told them that there will be a few volunteers who will come in and tap a music. Think of a famous song that you think everybody knows. It could be like a happy birthday or something, mm. but twinkle, twinkle, little star or whatever it is. But tap it, but don't tell them what you're tapping and let them listen and guess what you're tapping. Mm. Now, before you tap, what do you think is a percentage that they will guess the music? And the person who was about to tap said 50 percent, 60 percent, they would be able to guess because more or less they'll be able to guess, right? Mm. She said, okay, go ahead, do the test. And then they tapped. And they did this experiment about 106 times. And only six times or three times or something, they found they could actually guess what the music was. So, there is about approximately three percent of the peop times they could guess what the music was. Now, what is the inference of the story is, when you are tapping, mm -hmm. the reason why those people cannot guess is because you have the music in your head when you are tapping. Mm. They do not have it in their head. Okay. It is the same when you are having a conversation. When you are speaking to somebody, and this applies to you when you communicate with anyone in life. When you are communicating something with someone, you have the context, you have the map, you have the whole canvas in your mind and they do not. Just because you speak louder does not mean they will understand better. Like for example, if you tap harder, 
does not mean they will understand the song better, right? True. Just because you tap more hard, they cannot guess the music. And it's the same thing in terms of conversation. Just because we raise our voice, they will not understand. What we need to do is transfer our map into theirs. So how do you transfer our map of the world into somebody else's head? If you're having a conversation with somebody, what do you think is a way to actually transfer your ideas into somebody else's? Anyone? Huh? I know the answer. You know the answer. Somebody else? You can, but do you have an answer for the question? How would you transfer your thoughts and your map into somebody else's head? This is, it connects to that. Okay. Actually. When you said basically that, you know, if you raise your voice and you can't really transfer the message to others because they are in their own world, it's like, I feel like there is a yes and no to this answer because especially from our cultures, from subcontinent culture, you see that there is traditionally for so many years, people have been following these others who raise their voices, who feel, mm. you know, who actually are might is right kind of philosophy. And others who are down to them or inferior to them in their culture, whenever they try to even raise their voice a little bit, those voices are either eliminated or squashed. So, in a way, traditionally, when you raise a voice more, it has actually proven that you can dictate others. So you are making other player people stop their m music in their head, so to call, and sort of have their, your own tune transferred to them, which is on a very coercive method. Is that effective? So it's a very interesting thought that you, just one interesting point in the whole conversation that you just said, I love it. Uh, what you have just shared, which is, which is po possibly true. When we are talking to somebody, they are probably having their own music or say their own thoughts going on in their mind because of which they are not listening to us completely. So in a manner of speaking, by raising your voice, what you are traditionally thinking is you are shutting off every music in their head so that they can focus on your message. Mm -hmm. That is a nice way to put it, but the fact is when you are not around, they will not do what you ask them to do. And it is not coming from inside for them to create that real transformation. So if you really want somebody to actually change the way they do things, then what you need to do is you need to actually transfer your why. Transfer the reason why you are doing things in a manner that they get it. What is the answer? Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask question for so when you ask questions, what happens is you trigger their mind into creating what you have in your mind. When you are not in the process of giving information, but taking information, you engage their thought process. When I ask you a question, can you think of anything else but the question? You have the opportunity to actually think of something else and have your own thoughts. But when you ask a question, then you're completely engaged over there in that spot. So when I was asking you a question, you were going all over the place okay. because you had your own thoughts. Yes. So what I try to drag you and bring you back to a certain point. So that is what you will do with conversations where you will actually get people to focus, laser focus on an area and when they do that, then slowly they will give an answer and then you will paint another picture and then another picture and then another picture and in that the canvas will be built. So when I am asking you and you are giving me answers, I am actually seeing it is not fitting for me in the map that I have created because my intention is to add value over here. My intention is so that they can take away something and apply in their lives or take away something and do something. But when your story goes all over the place and they're not getting anything, mm -hmm. then what I do is I try to bring you back. And that's yes. what I try to do in all conversations. I'm not talking about you. Yeah, I'm saying in terms of yeah. everyone in general, whoever comes for awesome workers is what I mean. So when someone goes tangently, what I try to do is I try to bring the conversation back to the fact because my intention is one and only one, how to add value. How can someone take something from here so when he was giving you feedback and you were trying to say, I was doing this and I was doing that, then what, you're losing the point I felt. Mm -hmm. Because what he was trying to do is give a feedback. When he was giving you, he was giving you feedback. And in that, then you can try to revisit how you do things and how you say things and observe and probably try to 
streamline your thought process to make it more succinct so that they understand your message. Okay. So what you could do in the future is maybe, maybe take feedback from people when you communicate with them and rather than justify, try a different tactic, uh, try a different approach to con communicate your message and until they don't get your message, keep trying and trying new ways of communicating your message until you figure out that they are able to repeat exactly what was your message. Yeah. You have ideas, you have thoughts and I know this. You have lots of ideas and you have lots of thoughts. But it has to resonate there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, on, on his uh, thought, maybe how I understood, I understood he said like uh, talk about something like uh, so that's why I was like answering it. So okay. But I'm not. Uh, Super. Like, uh, yeah, to know. Let's give it up. <laughs> Thank you. You're so wonderful. The room is heavy. <laughs> let's make it light. <laughs> no, let's make it light. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. It's no one's fault. See, the thing is. Um, uh, one of. The great uh, lessons that I have learnt recently uh, is the art of vulnerability, the art of just being yourself openly and it, it can become such a heavy exercise sometimes, it can become such a daunting uh, feeling. But the most amazing outcome and this is what I do for organizations, when I go into organizations and when people start opening up and having those sessions they feel, oh my God, I just opened myself completely to these people. But in that, it brings the people so close together that there is great opportunity. So who wants to go with the next heartbeat question? What thought comes to your mind when you think of a heartbeat? End of life. And beginning of new. Okay. Somebody actually told me about very interesting about heartbeat is that uh, if your life is up and down, mm -hmm. right? Just going, you're having success, you're having failures, then you might have a little bit of success. But actually living your life rather than people who tend to have a, like a stable life, monotonous life. Yeah. So they are living a dead life. Yeah. It's like all the way on just continuously moving on the same path. Mm -hmm. It has no up and down, so they don't have a heartbeat in, it, in their life. If your life is up and down, they're actually having a heartbeat, so you're actually living a life. When was the last time you really felt alive? Ten minutes ago. What do you do? I had some interesting phone calls and some clients and some customers. So like a big problem just came up with a client. So I might actually made him lose about 2.5 million dollars. What? Yeah. So this is a challenge, right? So at this moment, I mean, this is a kind of problem I was working. <laughs> Join us. So but it's like, that's why I just came by here just to, you know, push it off. Would you like to share with us your story? Hey. Hi. Ah, this actually place seems very different from here. From here, huh? Yeah. You've never been to this side, yes? <laughs> from a stage and from the audience, it's like a different. Yes. Okay. So tell us who you are and what's been your journey a little bit. Who am I? I'm a, well... 2.5 million? Exactly. <laughs> so, I <laughs> sure, I mean, yeah. So the thing is that, uh, who am I? I'm a, I feel like this is a question that I've been asked a lot of times uh, in my life. The first thing that comes to my mind is uh, that the answer comes to my mind, which I'm never able to share. Probably I'll share it over here. Uh, I am a mixture of gases wrapped up in a matter. Okay. That's what I feel like. This is who I am. When I look at you, I'm going to detract a little bit and I'm going to ask you a question. Right. You can feel comfortable to share or you don't have to. Uh, if you feel like you don't want to share it, it's absolutely fine. 
when I, whenever I meet you, in your eyes I see a lot of pain. I don't know why. There's some kind of a pain written there. Uh, That's it? That's the question? All right. Sure. There is. But what pain there is, I mean, that is something uh, not personal. Touch wood. Not personal. That is the good part about it. It's mostly, I think, identity pain. Identity pain. Identity? Yeah. I mean, my life is a bit like, uh, what can I say? Uh, I'm, I was born in a, a middle class family back in Pakistan, Karachi. Karachi is one of the cities in Pakistan which is like most uh, populated city, most vibrant city. So my life story is like uh, my father, uh, he has been always, uh, you know, in his own time period, he has seen a uh, lots of ups and downs. Uh, he, his father was not so rich, but they came from a very, they had a very big rich family. After partition, things went bad. And then after partition, my grandfather, grandfather worked very hard, so that we come from a business family. And all my relatives, they were all in businesses, different businesses. So I come from a caste called Maiman, which actually is about, uh, their life is all about mosque, shop, house. That's their life. But my grandfather, they, he actually was a bit crack-headed, crazy, in a way that defying power, raising up issues, which nobody actually even thought about it. And when they did, they like, doesn't create value because they were from business perspective. So my father was very close to his father. And he sort of got that thing. And he, again, went into a different uh, lifestyle. Uh, so he went into government services, which nobody in my relatives or my family could even think about it. What year was this? My father? Uh, my father actually went into, I think, in 1970s. OK. So he actually went, he's a, in, he was in military service. OK. So his, like just to give you a very small synopsis about him is that uh, there were four friends. They went to this call, uh, test called ISSP, which is a military test. So there were four friends uh, who, just after completing their metric, uh, matriculation examination, they wanted to go for vacations and they didn't have any money and they couldn't ask their parents for it. So what happened was that, man, I, this guy is gonna kill me. <laughs> Uh, so what happened was that... Uh, Maybe you can listen to the conversation. Just no, <laughs> I don't have to tell him that I'm here. <laughs> uh, so the thing is that uh, they didn't have any money. Uh, so after they were completing their metric exam, they saw this ad on the newspaper that there is a military examination happening, which is up in the northern areas of Pakistan. And the expenses are going to be paid by if you apply for it and you will get reimbursed. So they just went up for a tour? So they all all four better. friends just went to a tour. Three of them were serious in getting into military. My father wasn't. Only he got selected. And he got selected. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Very> he, <laughs> and he was the most thin person in his family. Like literally the most thinnest person. Yeah. His waist at that time was maybe 24. Yeah. And so his waist was about 24. Yeah. And everybody was like, you know, healthy, macho man and all that thing. Yeah. And I've noticed this about a lot of people who go for these interviews, where when you feel that you have nothing to lose, you give it your all. Yeah. I think that is one of the key things, you know, when yeah. you feel 
a lot of people when they go for interviews they feel like oh i have to get this job yeah. they're desperate and that's when they lose a job and that's the thing see i mean when i was growing up so i was very close to my grandfather and my father so when i was growing up uh people around me people you know my relatives from both sides all of them were like so getting stressed about life about issues about responsibilities about this and about that like you said ask questions i used to ask them questions 90% of the time i used to be scolded upon or i used to be ignored and uh, 10% so of the time that i used to get answers was from my grandparents and when my father was relaxed this is all tying up to the identity crisis yeah okay i mean uh, during the school days everybody used to tell me that you should have a good grades i asked them why they said because then you could get a good job i asked them so why should i get a good job they said because you can then live a good life i was like why should i live a good life why i mean people i could see outside who are in the footpath just sleeping over there people who are working at our house as a servants they are not having a good life but they're living it they're happy they could enjoy it. i could see smile on their faces what is good life and then they say you should have money you should have a car you should have a house it's like why why do you need these things why do you need to have these assets are you going to take with you i remember i i like i used to ask them when some other relatives to relatives funerals were happening everybody is like you know being sad about it and then i used to ask some of my uncles like he was so stressed and having those assets and you used to you used to have these thoughts at what age school college have you figured out an answer yet no i mean that's the thing you see once i completed my college uh then i was like looking for what should i do which university should i go for then everybody at that time was either going for engineering or doctor i didn't want to go do that because it was like i could have done it i could have gone into engineering school college or university uh, i had the numbers for it grades for it but i didn't and so my father was very upset that this guy is gone crazy so he made me check my ct scan <laughs> he actually checked me like is he crazy or something like and uh, so then i went into business administration and in business administration i just used to go to university classes everybody was like writing about the notes and everything and i was just listening to the teacher i wasn't writing anything i didn't used to bring register or pen or anything i used to go without books i understand all this but have you found the answers yet actually yes and no because once i get the answers after completing my university uh, in finance uh, i got some good grades so everybody was going to banks i didn't want to go to bank uh, so i went into journalism that's why i went into journalism because to find the answer of this identity crisis because of questions because then i could like okay now i can i'm getting paid to ask questions so i think probably this is something i might go for so what is so you been a journalist yeah and you went looking for answers yeah and then you quit that was it because you found your answers uh no actually uh, because i i was i worked as a journalist for three and a half years in pakistan and things like during 2007 and 8 things got really bad as a journalist in that time so then my parents were like when they were living in a different city i was living in a diff- i was working and living in karachi so and it was very difficult time as a journalist there so they gave me an ultimatum that uh, either you quit your job or you know we just don't want to talk to you then because it's as good as not talking to you hmm. it was that bad uh, i was working as a journal reporter city reporter so in karachi during 2007 and 8 so there were a lot of killings happening for against journalists and i was doing some stories against extremist groups and some gangsters over there so i had some like i was working maybe 17 to 18 hours a day at that time hmm. i was living alone and you know i was working there 
media inspired, like really, I enjoyed life as a working as a media worker. So we'll just pause over here. What are you getting? Craziness. No, I'm just curious because when we sit over here, when you're sitting on this side, it's a different uh, space. Story. Story is amazing. What are you getting? It's getting interesting. I mean, I want to see where he is uh, taking the story. Yes. Because I can see he's talking from his heart. I mean, yeah. All reflecting from his real life. And even I cannot even figure out what his identity is looking for. Yeah. Is it the individual identity or is it the, the family identity? Or what is that he's seeking for? Yeah. I'm looking for that answer very he ends up Interesting. Yeah. Just a feedback so that he can Hello. go into his more. What, what are you getting? Still. Still a search, okay. What are you getting from a story? Not from the story, from him. Okay. Um, I feel that he is, uh, um, like, even though he is getting cold or getting, he is still like, like he's he's in control. Uh -huh. He's trying to be in control of himself, not to be distracted by phone by everything. He's trying to. This is what I. Yeah. Another interesting story, like like a movie, like the way for like famous. Go on. Ah, I mean, life is a story, right? Yeah. Everybody has a story, and uh, that's something that I'm basically went into my identity. It's because, uh, you know, like I've, as a journalist, I've found a lot of stories of people. Uh, and uh, I try to create some space for their stories to be put out. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to create uh, some impact from their stories, not just to the people who are trying to raise their voices, but also to the people who can listen to them and maybe respond rather than react mm -hmm. and in the process they might create an impact also. So all of that was when, I, when it was happening uh, then somehow some way my journey uh, you know m pushed me towards working for British Council in Kashmir. So I worked there as like about a year almost. And which was another very interesting because I was working for um, British Council. It was a British High Commissioner's project. And their project was uh, connecting Kashmir to Manchester through technology, ICTs. And my aim was to create storytelling in a way that the technology should become invisible and the story should become enhanced so that the experience and the impact could be felt and the you know miscommunication misrepresentation could be minimized between the two communities <coughs> that went for about a year and then i got a chance to uh, go to europe for this uh, my studies in global journalism so i went there i got the opportunity i was a bit of a traveler myself and that's why one of the things that I want, like through journalism, I went into this f process because I wanted to work around uh, the identity issues. You know, what's, who am I? Why am I? So that something was, I was trying to explore. And right now in such metamorphosis, you know, so social media, Traveling has become easy. Everybody is having problem in their lives. That is the pain that you, why I wanted to answer with you, probably. That this is the, really the pain that we can't just, you know, take a big pause in our life, see what's happening around us, and just, you know, take it in a way that this is all temporary. But that pause is very difficult for people. What is permanent? 
that would be a bit religious aspect but being permanent aspect this would be a really you know nothing is permanent i think what you leave behind is permanent right your no. thoughts your ideas that is also not permanent i feel okay i mean i can give you examples of it for oh. example okay uh roman empire they left behind a big legacy right? okay it's not permanent greeks they came up with a parliamentary system of democracy okay it's not permanent okay their ideas were not permanent till today all nations but the ideas permanent it's just not executed now that's all that's the thing execution, execution is different that's the thing you see even if you execute the most powerful countries they are not they don't have a perm, like those same set of they can't achieve that democracy because it's never in a state of permanency okay so what was the purpose of all those questions that you asked a long time ago you were trying to find out a lot of things you had all these questions and you went on this journey in journalism and traveled the world and you're back to jlt yeah i mean this is where i mean i think i think i came to dubai because uh, i came to dubai 8 months ago uh to my parents okay i felt like i need some kind of a grounding uh i felt like perhaps uh, you know identity finding looking for identity or finding your identity is a lost cause it's basically finding i don't know i mean i think it's a journey it's because your identity changes see that's one of the things that when your guest comes here every week what i actually find the common factor in all your guests is that everybody was open enough to change their mindset and be able to connect what the nature or the universe is giving to them right and once they were able to get hold of it they were able to achieve okay this is something they might do once they start doing that that also keeps on making them change but then the change is becomes a constant for them hmm. which is not permanent and they don't have the some fixed identity okay yeah. and this is something that basically when i was listening to jerry seinfeld i don't know if you know about him jerry seinfeld actually has a very interesting philosophy on life uh he actually said that talent is like a horse mm mm-hmm. you know if you get on it then what you do with it i mean you can the horse may if you don't control the horse properly it can throw you back but if you get the hold of it and somewhat feel the horse a bit how to tackle it how to you know uh digest because that is a talent you get feel like out of the world like once you get your skills understand like okay this is who i am like for example in your case if i may y- you find your talent you're a conversationalist right and if you found now that you have found that this is your talent this is the horse that you have now got up on to it and now you can actually guide you this horse in certain directions and make it run in a way sometimes you can run fast sometimes you can hop around the trees but you can you have got the handle on your talent some people who are not able to got the handle on their talent the talent actually overwhelms them people don't know that this is their skills what's your talent that is the thing that's why i was like sharing about the heartbeat aspect you know i mean i keep getting up and i keep getting off so that's one of the rings right now which i'm feeling around you know what's your talent i don't know i think it's like a jack of all trades master of none but then again i feel like that is a cliche as well uh i think i have a talent to uh be calm in stress situations but at the same time i am very stressed if that doesn't make if that makes any sense <laughs> i don't know 
what are you guys getting? No, not yet. I mean, I know my name is Adil. <laughs> no, when you say identity, give us give us some perce perception, like what kind of identity are we talking about? I mean, I don't know. It's in what question, what perspective you're asking. So let me just uh, rephrase that. Over here in the room, how many of you are very strongly connected to your identity? All right. Hmm? Your identity. Are you connected with your identity, who you are and what you are? You are? Huh? Emirates ID, okay. Yes. Yep. I mean, this is another thing. You see Emirates ID that you shared. Uh, people actually have different passports, you know, dual nationalities. So, what's so do you guys know what Adil's conversation is about? Do you know there is a phrase for this? Identity crisis. It's not identity. Identity crisis is one, but the questions that he has been asking himself. Uh, have you heard of a terminology which actually elaborates on what this is? No, what he has been talking about and what he has been going through in his life. What is this called? Who am I? Who am I? Yes. It, 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 it's called. Uh, it's called existential angst. Existential angst. You have a life, and you are wondering, why am I here? Did you expect us to come up with that word? Existential. So you exist, but you're wondering, why do I exist? You know. Yeah, he's smart. No, now you know it. So tomorrow onwards you can say it, right? <laughs> Exist. Exist. Existential. Existential angst. I, I have been through the same thing. There, there's a lot of things that I resonate with you. Uh, my parents also wanted to do a series, can I believe? So, uh, you're in the same I, boat. I, I but understand what you time. said about exist. I, I feel uh, it's somewhat yes and no in the, again. Because I, I mean, I'm very grounded at the same time. Uh, oh, we are. We are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people I, with existing shanks are grounded. Yeah. Uh, but there's a saying in my city that person who knows most is the depressed person. There is a saying that goes around it because you see, and at the same time, I mean, this is what I don't understand is they make kids go to school, get education, get knowledge. Once they get the knowledge, they don't want them to share openly and if they do get to share, if they do let them share openly share what their knowledge which which they have achieved like oh, questions really? yeah because when they do they are in trouble they are asking questions which are something might you know disrupt the power they are asking questions that might become very you know disrespectful okay yeah. they might ask questions so you're saying you do uh, they don't want children to challenge the status quo it's not challenging it's basically just they feel challenged the the listeners feel challenged yeah the ans people who yeah yeah and that's what i don't understand okay and this is where i feel like you know living in a western society like for about seven eight years uh i've explored that if they that is again also a problem that if you let those gates open to challenge everything, then again you're in a very bad situation. You're true. You know you don't basically grow, make things up. Yes, Gaurav, you wanted to ask something or say something. I was just reminded of something, and this is just input. Uh, there is a guy called Rumi. Rumi. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. Who Went to go <laughs> neighbor, huh? who actually wrote something and a Hindi film a director picked what he said. I already like what you're saying, so I'd like you to come over. <laughs> so I, I him, it's about him, so okay. let him hear it and then... Okay, yeah. all right. So when Rumi is in the picture, I like it. <laughs> he, uh, the director, a guy called Imtiaz Ali, used the lyrics okay. in a way 
and I would like to sing it. Okay. Okay. So the song is Jo bhi mein kehna chahu Barbaad kare alfaz mere which for those who do not understand Hindustani, Urdu, Hindi is what I want to say, my words ruin it. So all of us here, for example, could just stop our lives, pause button and just be. It's just that this box that we have between our ears is chattering away and therefore there is this need for us to constantly be verbose say 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 what we want to say maybe we want to or we could be softer or slower and not be in a hurry to say it just be so when he was talking, this is what was running in my mind. I thought I'd share it. Why was it running in your mind? Uh, partly because what he was saying today and partly because what he has been saying in the past. I find because he is a learned man, he feels that he needs to share. Possibly to show that he knows and I am of the view that a lot of us or most of us don't have the answers and it is a problem that we need to accept that we don't know those answers. But given that we've grown up and we've come from so far away, we can't accept that we don't know the answers. So mm. So, we make up our stories and we share them to be someone who may be we are, may be we are not. And of course, I have been in this city, very fortunate to be in this city for the last 21 years. Um, I feel a lot of us um, love this product called plastic. Okay. And uh, a lot of times we are not who we really are. So I call, uh, you know, we want to be someone who we are not. So it's plastic. It's Why would you say that? Of course, uh, I believe more than one person in this audience has an existential angst. What we have, we don't like. What we don't have, we want, aspire for, hanker for. And what, whatever we have, it's uh, what we say in Hindi, dal bhat. Hmm. It's okay. The next guy, he is living the life. Hmm. I am not. Or I wish I had that, so that I could provide better things for my family, for my friends, for myself. So, again, what I call being ground floor. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are flying and not being here and now. Mm. And we are on the 33rd floor where actually we should be on the ground floor. Could be. No, there is no should. Because everybody has his or her you know, where we come from, where we are going, where we are today. So, we could look at uh, being here and now and enjoy the company that we have, the heights we have accomplished, the heights we are going to accomplish, but more importantly being here and now in the company of beautiful people, beautiful souls, beautiful beings. You have just hit recently the age of 50 and uh, you have crossed a milestone in your life and 
uh, listening to you speak and always uh, having interactions with you, I've always felt you come across a very learned person or a person who uh, has interesting way of looking at things. Uh, as a parent, uh, when you are raising your kids, Sorry, I didn't get the question. Make up a question ah. in your head. <laughs> <laughs> so you touched on two or three things of exactly. so my then life, but uh, my reflections on that. Uh, yes, I was born in 1968, so last month I turned 50, and I'd been <laughs> <laughs> a lot of effort from your side, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, and I'd been kind of looking out for it. Uh, Frankly, the way I looked at what a 50-year-old person would be, I am not him. Uh, to me, 50 was like someone who's in some other frame of mind. Uh, to me, you I, still in my mind, a 50-year-old person has more gravitas. Gravity is more grounded. <laughs> Gravitas is, you know, something <laughs> more. Uh, <laughs> Gravitas. Uh, anybody has Google here? Can someone Google what is gravitas? No, in your mind. What in is my gravi mind, gravitas is someone who's more serious, more accomplished, more sought after. The typical, say, typical picture, like why, when uh, we were, were children and we look up, like same, same to me, like I don't know, like I'm 53, and uh, my daughter even now suppose, it, it always tells me that, Mama, you are 53 years now, you mustn't uh, talk like a child, you mustn't laugh like a children, look, you mustn't do all of these things. <laughs> totally. This is what you mean? <laughs> what you mean? Okay. So, <laughs> um, I salute you. Please. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, I think I, I still relate to being 15 than being 50. And does your children feel the same about yes, you? Yes, yes. Okay. So, I'll just give you an example. And this may or may not be appropriate, but I'll say it nonetheless. So, um, on turning 50, I decided to celebrate with my family and friends and, uh, and we had a gathering and uh, the theme was vintage. Okay. So I accordingly dressed up in a three-piece suit with a bow tie and whatever and the party progressed and we had a cake and we had champagne and this and that and everybody was having fun. And as the evening progressed, one piece of clothing came off. The bow tie? No, first the bow tie, <laughs> then the jacket, okay. then the, the vest uh, that one has, you know, the th three-piece vest, then the shirt. And Why was this happening? Because it was very warm. In, ah, okay. in New Delhi, um, okay. in August, it, it was warm. And as things came off, uh, people were scandalized more yeah. more my children my wife and okay. some of my other chaperons uh, he said what is happening you, you people want to see you in that you know three piece bow tie <laughs> but i was having fun okay and uh, it came down to me being in my vest of course trousers were there and everything else but i was having fun but people around my, me were uh, wondering what's happening, then I put on my that other vest, and there was a guest who was the the highlight of the evening. And uh, for people who have not been to India, you'll find it fascinating, or you might have a parallel in your own culture. This gentleman uh, was invited by a friend of mine. I had never met him before, and while the music was playing and we were all dancing. This gentleman came along and he had a wad of 500 rupee notes. He came next to me and started doing that. So within say about 30 seconds, he had blown up about 
50,000 or, or something like that. Yeah. 500 into 100 or so. And I was... That's close to 3,000 dirhams, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, it was a fascinating experience. Nobody had done it to me, not even at my wedding. <laughs> and someone kind of... It's, it's, uh, Nobody even transferred that money to your account? <laughs> no, no, the, the kids around... <laughs> The kids around could not believe it was happening. And once it registered with them, they were on the floor picking up. <laughs> and some of them had a, made a good killing that evening. So it was a memorable kind of uh, picture in my mind. Uh, and this gentleman, when he was leaving, I went down with him. And apparently someone in the hotel lobby said, there's this guy <laughs> going around with less clothes in a five-star hotel. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> anyway, so, so bottom line, I, I do things, I think, more on the moment. Uh, it's not scripted, it's not um, thought through even. It may or may not be prudent. It's just me wanting to do something. Interesting, yes. I, I missed the first part of your interview, but... Does that mean this is why you decided to go fasting on water for 20 days? 21 days. 21. So was that also a spontaneous decision? Can you tell us about it in this experience? 21 days on water only? Um, as I said, I was saying, uh, probably you got it or uh, it was before you came in. Uh, I feel that this is one life. Uh, a lot of people, uh, especially millennials, talk about YOLO. You only live once. And I, I take that on and I say, I have never been here before. And can it be done non-conventionally? Can it be done with my fingerprint on it? So I'm constantly trying new things. Why is that important to you, your fingerprint on things? I'm Leo, probably. That is one association I have it, with it. Thing. So you're trying I to. Do it my so, you're, way. so you're trying to confirm to all Leos. Possibly, or I say, look, I thought of it, so let me do it. Okay. And if someone suggests something or orders, I <laughs> probably have a rebellious uh, reaction or response hmm. uh, to that. Interesting. So this thing. Um, I've had an issue with um, not being so active in the last, say, 30 years. Uh, initially, um, I was very active. My father was a sports administrator. So from the age of four and a half, I was swimming, I was playing tennis, I was into various other sports. And through school, that continued. Um, once I got into college, I had certain circumstances where I wanted to take on the American dream of earning and learning. So I got out of school and started working uh, and joined a evening college. Uh, so that was an experiment. Respond on various aspects when they, do, they know that they don't know the actual answer. So, if I put myself into that bucket, I know I don't know that question, but definitely when you ask something, I will become conscious and I definitely respond. So, this is a problem statement I come to know. But as I heard about you from the lot of people over here, I come to know that you might have an answer for this. I know this is a problem, but I even also know like a, I don't know why I'm getting into situation when I have to respond every time. So if you have experienced any time of your age that how can we deal with this situation, sure. which is the ideal ideal one that I have to stop and accept. I don't know. So how can we convert ourselves into uh, that situation to that. If you can give us a two, three, three. Sure. I'd love to answer that, but I believe in a concept called FIFO, okay. which is first in, first out. Sure. 
So Sami had a question. I'll answer that and then come to your question. Uh, if that's okay. Uh, So, um, I, I believe I'm an adventurer and therefore I like to try new things. I spoke about being sporty and then for the last 30 years almost not being sporty enough and therefore that's the reason I give it. I, I love eating food and I don't love exercising so much. Though I want to project that I do, but it's not as often. So I eat more often then I exercise and as a result I have a mid portion and I'm as I say I have no guilt in saying I'm 50 I have no guilt in saying I'm 100 kilos I'd love to be 70 kilos and in that quest I try yoga I try uh, something called EMS which is a, a kind of exercise regimen where they dress you up and they pulsate uh, through electricity uh, various portions of your body so that you exercise parts that would not be exercised otherwise and there is a potential that you lose weight. So the water exercise was similar uh, where I wanted to lose weight and I did it under supervision of uh, my yoga guru. Um, I've been with him uh, for almost 14 years and about 10 years ago I had done a similar exercise. And I find it is best done during Ramadan when people are, a lot of people around you are fasting. So I just took it on. It's done under supervision where the person uh, advises you to do certain things and not do certain things. And what you do is uh, you have lots of water and um, you also do something called inima, which is a way of clearing uh, the waste in your body. And you just live your life. Initial couple of days, it is an uh, uh, issue where you feel something is wrong. But then you adapt to it and life goes on. So was I able to answer your question? Now coming to your uh, question. Um, there is this concept of looking good. As human beings, in the company that we keep, we want to look good. And because we want to look good, we have this fear of rejection maybe also. So when someone asks us a question, we want to look good and we want to avoid rejection. So we think of smart answers, sometimes smarter than where we are. And therefore, it could be your boss, it could be your girlfriend, it could be your boyfriend, or it could be your parent or your child. You are, you are not being true. Perhaps, this is my assumption. Because you want to look good. So, maybe it's time for us or you or me to experiment. Saying, what if I, for one day, am truthful? So if Samir asks me something that I don't know enough about, that I tell him, sorry, this is beyond me. I may have to read about it or I may have to ask Uncle Google and then respond to him. So like as an accountant, for example, there might be certain things that you have done in the past. There might be certain things that you know a little about, but not the entire thing. So you just say, Sorry, I don't know enough about it. Let me get back to you. Can I get a couple of days to answer you? Rather than khataks. Yeah, I, I know it. Truthful is the key. Is one of the keys. Because, as I said, you are in plastic Dubai. <laughs> uh, you might say, today is green Dubai. <laughs> I will only <laughs> speak natural stuff. <laughs> it might hurt people, it might uh, hurt me. Let's do it and let's see. I will not take your much time, but uh, when you explain to him, I also went through the same kind of situation, but I dropped in between because I'm feeling a lot of craving about food. I'm, I'm honest on this situation, yes. but how you fight that craving? That's, that's the thing. Uh, that's where ego kicks in. 
there is a fight inside. Should I eat or should I be strong in my mind? Saying food is there and of course you become philosophical by the way. So you, everybody should not try this. You become philosophical. My philosophy was... Huh? No, so my, my philosophy okay. is, or at that time was, you see, I am Gaurav Paul, I've been here, this is my asset, this is my family, this is what I have uh, in my bank. But there are people around me who have tall buildings, they have long cars, they have, you know, beautiful people in their lives, or they have... X, Y, Z, but it is theirs, it is not mine. Similarly, the food that is in front of me is not mine today. So, deal with it. Body demands. Actually, dot does not. It is the stuff between the ears that demand. Yeah, it's called manger, right? <laughs> manger. Manger is, mind is telling you that you're hungry, you know, it's... So it's a I'd like to ask you something. What What are you getting from him while he is having his conversation? He is very philosophical. Okay. <laughs> and he doesn't say anything about himself. Okay. Yeah. You talk in the cloud, beautiful. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> I don't know anything from you. First one. <laughs> I'll, I'll come to that. Yeah. I'll come to that. No, it's okay. Like yeah. we said, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't no. have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just you about see, taking... One of the weaknesses that I have is I have this tendency to speak the truth. I think. Yeah. Maybe my ego yeah. is speaking. It, it is your truth. It's my truth. It's your truth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you say plastic Dubai, can you reflect something? Is it your own experience or you've seen people around? Your perception. And came to that the perception that my, the plastic Dubai. My perception is that Dubai is a young city. And everybody is aspiring. If he has 10 dirhams, he wants to show he has 200 dirhams. So why, how did you come to that? From my experience. I, so I have been alive people. in the last 21 so years. So what he means is it's very artificial. Oh. Dubai is very artificial. That's what Maya plastic Jaya. Dubai is. It's a... Maya Jaya. Huh? Maya. Maya. Maya Nagri. So, so how does that impact you as a person? Yeah. When also... You are not artificial. Yeah. Does it impact or does it impacted your, your yeah. life? Uh, yeah. By the way, why I used plastic is uh, two very quick instances. One is for the last, uh, my last job about a year ago was with the Regional Petrochemical Association. So plastics is one of the products that I represented. <laughs> And by the way, I'm very proud of so that product. <laughs> uh, plastic is fantastic. It's just that it's not handled properly. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants only the good stuff and nobody wants to take responsibility for after something has been used. So we are so used in 2018 to use and throw and not necessarily throw it the way is good for us, good for our children, good for the planet. So, plastic is something that I associate with. And nothing wrong with it. It's just that you have to be conscious that probably what you are saying, doing, being, is not you. So, that's, that's the kind of uh, correlation. The other thing is, very interestingly, about 15 or 16 years ago, I used to handle a brand of henna, meaning I was a product manager for a brand of henna. So I used it a couple of times. I was already getting gray. And uh, I also got to know that not everything is natural and might be uh, 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 not dangerous but harmful for us. So I quit coloring my hair. And then I joined this organization which represented the petrochemical industry. So when people would point out to my gray hair, I would say, look, I, I work for the petrochemical industry. I need not put petrochemicals in my hair. So I was gray for a long time. All right. Uh,
What are you guys getting? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tweak this a little bit. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.